Uh, call the city council meeting to order. Roll call, please. Alderman Cadella. Here. Alderman Coles. Here. Alderman Lewiton. Here. Alderman Lees. Here. Alderman Shockey. Here. Alderman Eugene Wesley. Here. Alderman Roy Wesley. Here. Alderman Winger. Here. Mayor Johnson. Here. Quorum being present, would you stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May a motion to approve the minutes of October 15th, 2009. So there on, on the second? Second. On the question? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Same. Two abstentions. Uh, bills, Alderman Winger. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to approve a list of bills dated November 5, 2009 for $994,009.46. Is there a second? Second. On the question, Alderman Wesley. Mayor, I have a question. Let me find it here. On the uh, School Street Project bill, uh, as we know, we've been having a little concern, some problems out there. Um, I will I will make the statement now that I will prove this I will prove this bill but keep in mind there's some issues out there that needs to be concerned about and I really don't want the council to spend any more money paying this company until those problems are resolved and we got our liquidated damage done on that property what bill are you talking about Alvin? I'm talking about MQ construction and school street page. statement page 12 for $147,030.81. And Mayor, may I follow up with another question? Alderman Wesley. Uh, the other question is the material testing for School Street for $5,423.50. Could someone tell me what those numbers were on the testing or produce a document and and was that the testing for the soil to see what the status of that was before we moved it? Page. page. I'm sorry, page 18. Mr. Kramer, do you have the answer to that one? If not, we may have to get back to you with the answer on that one. No, I'm sorry, I do not have information. I can uh, check with the city engineer to uh, get that for you. The mayor, I would be yeah. asking for that to be removed off the bills payable until they'll that information is forward on for $5,423.50. Does the movement agree? Yes. Seconder agree? Yes. Oh, the motion stands amended. Anything further on the question? No, Mayor, that will be it. Anything further? Roll call. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman R. Wesley? Yes. Alderman Cadalla? Yes. Alderman Lewiton? Yes. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman E. Wesley? Yes. Alderman Police? Yes. That passes. Uh, Council, without objection, I'm going to move down to uh, Mayor's report. Uh, Colton and Chief, you want to join me at the podium? Colton, sorry I missed your uh, court. Come on up. <laughs> sorry I missed your uh, court of honor. Uh, I told you that uh, one of the things I would like to do is talk to you a little bit about what was your uh, Eagle Scout project that you did. The Eagle Scout project was uh, we. One of the things we did was take down the buckthorn. We did that at the very end and all around the benches and by the dog park. And then we put we took out one bench. Replaced, um, replaced a couple of backboards to other benches, and uh, one on the pier there was a board broken, um, and we fixed that. We regrouted the pathways by the entry, and that's about it. And then the next day I came back and um, uh, put some stuff on there to keep it uh, from. Yeah. from riding away. 
And by the way, let's have the Scout Master come up and join us too as well. Uh, how many how many badges have you done over your career of scouting so far? I've done maybe about fifteen to seventeen. And did you go on the boundary water trips or what was your major um, adventure trip? I went all the on the adventure trips. I went on the two uh, canoeing trips, the two bikes bicycling, and now on the Grand Canyon. Very good. We have two proclamations that we want to give you here today. One from myself, but the one that's more important is from the chief. Are you driving yet? No. <laughs> when you drive, carry the chief's proclamation with you in your glove box at all times. <laughs> you, you may have a need for that. You know, it's nice to pull that. Okay. Whereas the Boy Scouts of America is a vital force in the development of our youth uh, through its many programs, which encourage the ability of its members to do things for themselves and especially for others. And whereas one of the major objectives in the scouting program is develop citizenship through community involvement, and in addition to working for citizenship merit badges, uh, scouts are encouraged to participate in community service projects. And whereas Colton Brandon is a member of the Boy Scouts of America, and not only has proven himself to be an outstanding member, but has attained the highest honor bestowed on a scout, the Eagle Scout Award. And whereas the Eagle Scout Award is a distinction that will follow him throughout life and will be a beacon to others of the leadership quality and commitment this young man has shown. Now therefore I, Mayor Kenneth P. Johnson, recognize Colton Brandon as worthy of the highest honor and encourage him to continue his commitment to excellence. In testimony aware of, I have here set my hand and affixed the seal of the city of Wooddale this 23rd of October, 2009. Congratulations to you, Colton. <laughs> One for you. Uh, tonight with me is Officer Larry Broche. Uh, not only is he a police officer with us, but he's also a district leader for uh, uh, Boy Scouting in this area. But uh, more importantly, Colton, uh, this is in recognition of your achievement on behalf of the Wooddale Police Department. Uh, one out of every 100 scouts attains the level that you're at, and you are be to, to be commended for that accomplishment. And uh, as the mayor said, I think that uh, it's not that me you need to talk to. It's guys like Larry and some of the other cops that uh, have been involved with scouting. And uh, once again, I know that uh, you'll emanate some of those uh, uh, values of citizenship and responsibility and respect in your future years. So once again, on behalf of the Wooddale Police Department, congratulations, Colton, on your accomplishment. Job well done. Yeah, photo, mo photo moment, photo <laughs> moment. Uh, Colton, the council would like to express their congratulations. If you just walk in front of them, they'd like to shake your hand. Thank you. Pleasure as always. Thanks, Mayor. Sure. On a more somber note, uh, Alderman Winger, do you want to come and join me in uh, the Brick family? Would you come and join me, please? Uh, the city lost one of its uh, outstanding uh, citizens, uh, one who always had an uh, easy smile and uh, was a great asset to our community. Uh, that is uh, John Brick, who uh, suddenly passed. Uh, Alderman Winger? I am uh, very honored to present the resolution of gratitude for John. Um, he, was a very, he was very special to me, and we had a great friendship. He positively affected many lives in the city of Wooddale. And I will always have a special place for John within my heart. Do it this way. A resolution expressing gratitude and appreciation to the Brick family for John Brick's service to the city of Wooddale. Whereas the city of Wooddale values the service of its many volunteers serving on boards and commissions. And whereas John Brick was born in the city of Chicago but made the city of Wooddale his home. And whereas John Brick served on various committees from 2001 until 2009, including the new post office committee, the streetscape committee, the special events committee, as well as the clean air counts committee. 
And whereas John Brick was a dedicated and engaged Wooddale citizen who developed friendships with many in the Wooddale community. And whereas John Brick was proud to have worked for the DuPage Forest Preserve District for more than 20 years, including pride in participating in the efforts to clean up the pond near Maple Meadows Golf Club. And whereas John Brick was a very hard worker and found pleasure in the game of golf and was a likable fellow with an easy smile. And whereas the city of Wooddale values the contributions of its volunteer citizens and encourages all Wooddale residents to participate in the community to the extent possible. And whereas the mayor and the city of council of the city of Wooddale desire to express to John Brick's family their gratitude for his spirit of volunteerism and dedicated service to the city. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city of council of the city of Wooddale, DuPage County, Illinois, section one, that by this resolution, the mayor and city council of the city of Wooddale express to John Brick's family their gratitude for his dedication, expertise, and constructive service to the city of Wooddale. Section two, that a copy of this resolution be spread upon the minutes of the city council of the city of Wooddale, and that a signed copy of same be suitably framed and presented to the family of John Brick. Section three, that this resolution shall be enforced and effect from and after its passage and approval in the manner provided by law. Mr. Mayor. Uh, we left off one section, and whereas John Brick was also known as Rambo. <laughs> Alderman Winger, is that your motion? Yes. Alderman Shockey, is that your second? On the question? Roll call. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman R. Wesley? Yes. Alderman Cadella? Yes. Alderman Lewiton? Yes. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman E. Wesley? Yes. Alderman Police? Yes. That passes resolution R-09-18. With our respects and with our condolences. Somebody can say a few words? Yes. Our thanks Thank to you, you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, I know that uh, my brother would be truly honored by this uh, wonderful proclamation. And on behalf of our family, we'd just like to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for everything that you guys have done for John. Thank you again. Thank you. I do have some other things on the mayor's report at this time, though. I'm going to go back to uh, citizens' comment. Do any citizens wish to address the city council this evening? If you'd go to the podium, please, and give us your name and uh, address. Uh, hearing none, I do have one letter uh, to the city of Wooddale. Uh, fall is upon us. Summer was way too short. Uh, children have been back in school, and hopefully some of our families have found jobs to support themselves again. For those that still need our help, we thank you uh, for answering the call to help support the less fortunate of our community. On behalf of the Bensonville Wooddale Food Pantry, we gratefully acknowledge your gift of $874, uh, part of Wooddale Cares. The charitable support received from our friends and donors assists us with the many aspects of the pantry, from clerical, transport, purchasing of equipment, refrigerators, freezers, shelving, dollies, truck and equipment repairs, and especially procuring food products. 
As a completely volunteer organization, we have accepted the task of making sure poverty, homelessness, and hunger have a chance to be stamped out or at least lessened in our community. Uh, we refer the less fortunate to other organizations that can help with other problems besides lack of food. With the economy putting a strain on us all, uh, we cannot thank you enough for still choosing to give. Uh, sincerely, the Bensonville Wooddale Food Pantry, Lou Notsky. And anyone who would want to donate to them, they did not give me a phone number on their letterhead. Uh, but they're based out of Peace Church, uh, 192 South Center Street in uh, Bensonville. That brings me back to uh, Mayor's report. And uh, item C is an ad hoc committee report on the Windsor drainage issue. Alderman Police, are you taking this one? Sure, I'll take this, Mayor. Um, about a month and a half ago or so, uh, you created this ad hoc committee for the stormwater on Windsor, Catalpa, Potter area. We met several times and uh, looked at a few different possibilities. I see uh, on this letter that there is one more possibility. I don't know where we stand. Maybe, John, you can reflect on this. Mr. Kramer? I did leave the option of uh, purchasing additional pumps off of the uh, email that I sent uh, the city manager. The uh, reason I left that off was uh, I was waiting for the report from URS to get a scope as far as how much water we're actually dealing with. Um, I have some preliminary numbers that uh, I'm comfortable in saying if we wanted to uh, purchase a, a additional portable pumps, uh, I know a four inch pump would cost the city in the neighborhood of $7,000. A six inch pump would be in the neighbor of twelve dollars to $15,000 depending on the size of the impeller and whether or not it was gas or a diesel pump. Uh, those were both short term uh, options to correct some of the problems at the Windsor Catalpa. Uh, site as far as uh, any other short-term options we did investigate one possible uh, system movement between two uh, stormwater systems that actually did not come to uh, fruition so we were not able to uh, do that option so the only other short-term option that the uh, staff had proposed was the pumping option so minus or in addition to the email that uh, I sent the city manager that the two pump prices would be the only other additional information that staff has. What was that price again, John? Um, a four inch pump, which is the current size of our auxiliary pumps that we use now is roughly $7,000 for a pump and hoses. And to go up to a six inch pump, depending on the size of the impeller, which is gonna say how much debris we can actually bring through the pump and whether or not if it's a gas or diesel pump is gonna be you know, basically anywhere between $12,000 and $20,000. It's, it, it's a huge jump and it really just depends on, you know, on what size we want to go with. I think that this matter probably should be referred to the Public Works Committee, but we'll entertain a brief discussion. I do have a question. Um, is this something in the spirit of intergovernmental cooperation where the fire department, uh, Alderman Wesley, I'll have to direct this to you, has uh, used hoses or hoses they replace every once in a while that we could eliminate part of this expense by picking up some of their used or equipment or some other department in DuPage County? First of all, Mayor, I, I guess we could call them and ask them, but obviously I, I didn't like that memo, so what's going on here so I, I have no problem taking under my committee the only drawback i have is i'd like to see what the study comes back before we do any expenditure of it first and and do you have any idea when that study will be back i'm sorry i don't have that information does our city manager know alderman please i spoke with dave earlier this week he's under the impression that either maybe by tomorrow or next week he might have that answer but that his answer is going to be the long-term answer. What uh, the committee was put together for was for temporary solutions, try and keep the, the pump idea, I believe, was the only really good idea we had. And it wasn't to <coughs> keep the street from flooding, but to keep the houses from flooding. That's why I'd like to entertain a motion to purchase the six-inch pump. Yeah. 
Uh, as this is not an agenda item, that would not be an appropriate, well, it is on the agenda, I take that back. Um, is there a second to the motion? I'll second. I'll second it. Alderman Wesley? Mayor, believe me, I have no problem doing this, but if we purchase this pump, what's the next one on South Cedar is going to come and ask for a pump? I understand their concerns, and I really do. <clears throat> But and what's going to stop the other people coming in and asking for a pump to be put in the area, South Cedar? I, I mean, I have no problem doing this, but I mean, we got to look in the picture if these people from South Cedar comes or North Cedar comes that we got a study going on and they ask for a pump, well, we better give them the pump too. I, I have no problem doing this, but just keep in mind, if those people come, they're going to get the same treatment. Uh, Mr. McHugh, did you have any comments you wanted to make? Uh, this would be the appropriate time. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Jack McHugh at 288 Windsor Street in Wooddale. And uh, I had been invited by the, uh, the mayor and uh, Alderman Police. It wasn't uh, four or six weeks ago. This committee has been in place for two and a half months. I've attended five or six meetings. Um, we, uh, we, uh, we did a lot of research. We looked at a lot of maps. And we, uh, we tended to not focus. And while I was in the meetings, I continued to try and bring the people that attended our committee meeting to the subject, to keep their eye on the ball. They had the, the eye on the ball. The ball was a short-term solution to the flooding on Windsor Street in Wooddale. We are very interested and wanted to contribute to uh, John, John's information and Dave's information relative to the long-term solution. Uh, we, uh, uh, I'm surprised at the, at the numbers, Mr. Mayor, that uh, John Kramer is coming up with today because they're slightly different than what was discussed at our last meeting probably 10 days ago or 12 days ago. And I also believe at that meeting, and I, I think I will be supported by the two aldermen, that it was the committee's recommendation to go to the city manager and ask for the funds to purchase this pump. It wasn't a what should we think about this. We, you know, when we started this committee, I was very, very clear and asked you, Mr. Mayor, and the city manager, are we, are we wasting our time? If we as a committee and your two, or our two elected officials agree that we can come back with some kind of a reasonable recommendation that the city council would concur and that we would go forward with this. I asked if the funds were available. I was very clear about that because I did not want to participate in a committee that would meet eight or 10 times. And I believe they, they met probably eight or 10 times and I was there for seven or eight of the meetings. A couple of times I could not be at those meetings. At the last one, there was a concurrence that we would make the recommendation to purchase the pumps. The report that I'm hearing today is different from what occurred at that meeting. Now, I, uh, Mr. Mayor, I wonder if you would uh, solicit comments from Alderman Police and Alderman Colts about that meeting. Well, just to clarify, a committee is a recommending body. I don't, I don't have the authority to commit for the city council as they remind me occasionally from time to time. Uh, so the final decision is always with the city council. Uh, I'll be glad to recognize Alderman Coles and Alderman Police, but why don't you finish any other comments you have to make at this point? Um, <clears throat> pardon me, my only comment is that uh, we, did, uh, we did spend a significant amount of time reviewing all of the possibilities. We looked at all of the various changes that have occurred in, in water drainage throughout that, the, that, that whole area of the city of Wooddale. And the only recommendation that we could come up with was to purchase a pump. We all agree that there are some faux pas that have occurred in the design of what, is, what exists today 
We, uh, we could go on and on about the discussion of water that is, uh, remains in the drainage system that is current there today. No one can give us any explanation as to why that water still is in those pipes when there's no rain, when it's dry. We still have half of those pipes full. We looked at the overflow to the railroad. There's, there was not any possibility that wasn't discussed in these meetings. Again, the, the, the prize was the purchase of a pump to resolve the near-term solution. Now, we went through September and October and we dodged the bullet. We didn't have the floods, but that don't mean that they're not going to come in the spring. So my comments are we continue with this committee, maybe we meet once a month, and I would, uh, I, I plead the city to make uh, a commitment that we're going to have an interim solution. Because even if Mr. Graff comes back and he and, and Mr. Kramer have their recommendations for what the long-term solution is, that could be 2012, that could be 2013. We don't know when that's going to happen. Mr. Kramer and Mr. Graff agreed that the street is going to have to have some construction. There's going to be some major issues to deal with here. There's going to be significant money that's going to be dealt with. So this ten to $14,000 is peanuts compared to what the real solution is. So I'm in representing the people from, from Windsor Street. Uh, again, Mr. Mayor, we were convened to come up with a short-term solution. We have, it would be uh, uh, a disgrace to refuse the results and the findings of the committee and our recommendation. Thank you, Mr. McHugh, for your comments and thank you for your service. And I would want the uh, committee to continue meeting through the uh, adoption of the uh, permanent long-term solution. Alderman Coles or Alderman Police, do you have any additional comments? Uh, Alderman Winger? Just a question for clarification, and if it was already stated, I apologize, but what's, what's roughly the cost of the pump? Mr. Kramer? Uh, depending on what pump we go with and depending on what size, it could be anywhere between seven to $20,000, depending on the pump, hoses, equipment. And let me just, as a point of clarification, let me just reiterate that staff's opinion with the pump was that we did not believe, since we didn't know, A, how much water was going to be in that area, we didn't know how much we could be able to pump, we didn't know how effective it would be, and also in that memo it did state that there would be mobilization time, there would be staff being called out in order to set up that pump, and depending on when the rainstorm started, depending on how heavy it was, and what parameters, those have all yet to be determined. Alderman, please. Again, <clears throat> this was basically a short-term solution to whatever, I don't, I don't know what the drainage study is going to talk about, but this was specifically to keep the water from going into the basements. The street is probably still going to flood, but if we save the houses, the 20000 or the 15000 will be worth it. Alderman Wesley. Um, I guess this question is directed to the manager. When is the study done for South Cedar going to be done? I'm in North uh, South Cedar. I'll have to get with the city engineer and get back to you on that. I don't have that, not that date off the top of my head. I guess my next question would be, uh, did you discuss at any time about a plan, a temporary plan for South Cedar at that time? No, we did not. Okay. I have, I have a little bit of problem going along with the temporary pump here because I got people in my areas flooding. And uh, if we're going to get a pump on North Cedar, I think we should have one on South Cedar to solve a temporary problem too. So it's Mother Bow South Cedar. And I'd like to uh, get that information before we uh, go any further on this from the manager and Mr. Graff. Alderman Lewitton. Uh, I'd like to just ask a point of information from John. Uh, 
are these pumps mobile and would that mean that they could be used at any location that flooded? Are they specific only for the constructive uh, necessity of South Cedar? Uh, correct. They are um, portable, trailable, trailerable pumps mounted on, uh, you know, a, a, a trailered vehicle pulled with either some sort of truck, pickup, dump style, and they will need to be filled with fuel, whether that be uh, gas or diesel. So they are portable. They can be moved. They do take a significant amount of setup time, and they will take 24-hour um, staffing to keep Second running. question, is this something that you would like in your stable of supplies? We currently have one in our staple of staple of supplies used for our wastewater division. So it would not be something that you know we could use for any other city project at this time. Thank you for those answers. I feel enlightened. Alderman Cadella. Come on back up, John. Sorry. You said you are currently not in in receipt of information that can substantiate the necessity scientifically for this pump. You think it could work, might not work. You can't prove it because you don't have the numbers yet. Are are those forthcoming? Did I understand that? Correct. At some point, we will have information uh, that should say how much actual water we're getting in that area or you know, a, a volume at least that's going through there. I would anticipate that would be one of the items that we get out of that study. Staff was not comfortable with making a recommendation on pump size. That's why we basically just took, um, you know, a educated guess on two pump sizes, knowing that we currently operate a four inch pump in a similar situation at our wastewater treatment plant in excess flow situations. We know that has a fixed volume of water. It can move 370 some odd gallons on a four inch pump in a minute. Um, so it, it, it has the capability of, you know, working out in theory, not knowing the scope, the amount of water, how much rainfall we have, how quickly we get it. Those factors all add into can we move that water to an area where it will then flow out of that site. And that's why staff was not comfortable with the option. They did not make that the staff recommended option to purchase pumps because we don't know the amount of water, we don't know the size we need, and we don't know if we could get it out there fast enough and pump enough water fast enough to make any significant impact other than we know that pumping the water will dissipate the water faster than naturally letting it go through the system. Okay, so it's probably a better question for the city engineer, but since you're here and talking with